Hi up and uh, welcome back to Last Cast. Um, we're out for a, a bit of a day, day session today, me and Bob. Um, we're going to do the canal. The canal actually connects into the river, so we're going to go all the way around it. So we're going to start off here, work down the canal. Um, we're after perch as, as usual this time of year. You know, we're not, we don't fish, for, you know, pike's our passion, but we don't fish for them in this sort of weather. Um, so we're going to fish down here. We're going to, um, I mean, basically what we're going to be doing is our usual style, which is using the little uh, Mepsaglia uh, longs, uh, size ones, possibly twos, um, fish it down, fish it round. What we're also doing is, um, is I've brought along my sort of drop shot gear as well. And uh, areas like this where you've got high, straight canal banks, um, you're going to struggle to fish those with uh, new straightforward sort of mepses, etc. You could probably fish them with jigs on the bottom, but th something like this, you know, locks and straight down banks, are the perfect for uh, having a, a go with the old drop shot. As I say, we don't tend to do it too much, um, but uh, we're going to give it a bash today. I'm going to use a um, couple of different types of drop shots when I get that hook out on my leg. There we go. I've got a um, little box here, little selection. We've got the, uh, the little pink worms, which I tend to like to use quite a bit um, onto that. And then we've got just some little imitation fish and then the usual sort of chartreuse, etc. And uh, a few of the, uh, the small white uh, capitos. Um, so I'm going to start off probably with a, uh, one of the uh, little pink worms on uh, from, from that point of view. Um, the set's up pretty straightforward, um, fluorocarbon, hook into the middle. I think as I mentioned on one of our previous videos, what I do is, uh, the first thing I do is I tie the hook in and I use a palomar knot. The reason that I do that first is it depends on which way up, you can see that sitting on the line with the hook up. So then I'll go above that and I'll put my hook, hook, hoop in, should I say to uh, connect to the main line and then the other end you put your weight on so always tie that end first and it literally is it's it's like um, bait fishing you'll just hook it onto the tip there attach it to your line and then off you go so literally what I do is I mean in this instance normally if I had a, a trace on I'd probably take it off but as we're going to be going between the two uh, principles I'm just literally hooking it onto the bottom of my trace so as you can see, there's the trace into the line and then sort of straight down from there um, with the, uh, the drop shot on it. Uh, as I say, we're going to have a go at that here. Uh, we don't do it too much because it's, it, 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 we've sort of had more success with perch with the, with the little maps. But somewhere like this, where we've got quite a steep bank, we're going to really struggle to, uh, to get in close to where the perch are with the maps. Um, but again, even though we've got probably 12 foot to the water here, um, it's okay to fish there, but we've got a splot down the bank here whereby, you know, we've, we've, we've got a foot to the water. So any fish that we catch in this area that are not able to be just lifted, then we we'll just bring them around here, net them, and then when, obviously when we're putting fish back in, you may see us walk off camera, but we'll be going down to the bottom here to put them back in. Uh, you know, you don't want to be throwing them from 12 foot into the water. Um, if you don't have access to get the fish back in safely, then don't fish the spot, it's as simple as that. So we've got a couple of setups. My setup is, uh, you've seen it before, it's my sort of drop shot and light uh, weights, etc. It's not the um, one that I was using last week, the salt setup from Savage Gear. This is, uh, it's a black Savage, seven foot four, um, and it's, it's a drop shot rod. Um, two to 12 pound casting weight, so nice and easy. It's also got the, uh, the luminous tip on, which you know I like from that point of view. Little Shimano. 2,500 uh, reel and I think that's 20 pound uh, braid from that aspect. Again, goes without saying, if you're fishing uh, with spinners etc then um, stick a wire trace on. That's the reason I've left the wire trace on so I can just, when I've decided I'm not using the drop shot anymore when we probably get into the body of the canal or the body of the river I can just unhook the, uh, the drop shot off the, the fluorocarbon and then uh, you know I'm straight into the mepsis. Those wise, as I say, we'll be using what we normally do, the, uh, the tiny little size one aglias, um, but the, uh, the, the long blades, again, I don't know if you can see that, but I've shown you them before. Size one, uh, they come in like a coppery colour silver, 
and gold. Silver seems to be the better one for us, but I think that's just because you get a bit more flash on it from, from that aspect. And again, all the usual gear, unhooking forceps uh, of a decent length. Um, when I'm perch fishing, I tend to like the, the forceps just to have a little bit of a bend in it. Um, when you're dealing with small stuff, it seems to be a little bit easier to just uh, get the hooks out. Pliers uh, in the backpack, um, landing net, unhooking mat. Uh, Bob's is set up um, as a new purchase. Um, he's got the little Akuma um, Jaw 20 on, which is a, a, a nice little reel. Um, again, about £20 braid. But the rod is uh, it's a Savage Gear Parabellum. Um, casting weight on that, I think, is uh, yeah, it's 3 to 10 grams. So it's not a million miles different to mine, although it does feel lighter. Um, 7 foot 1. Um, cracking little rod i mean bobs has had pike to 12 pounds on that um believe it or not and it, it was saying it handled it quite nicely that's obviously not what you're targeting but again if you're using a little uh, spinner as you'll see there the little meps aglia along and then into the the wire trace you, you know you're going to run the chance of picking up a pike from that so that's where we're at where we're starting from we're going to set off down the canal here we're going to start at this uh, entrance um with the the river and just start with the drop shot, pure and simply because of where we are. Um, you see the odd uh, canal barge coming through, there's one coming in from the river now. So we will crack on with that. And uh, as I say, I'm gonna start off with a little pink worm and then uh, see how we go. That's always been good for me, but if you're not catching and it looks as though there should be fish there, move and check, sorry, not move, change. Yeah, because you'd be surprised how, you know, just moving from that to, you know, a little green worm or something like that it makes such a big difference um, you know it just depends on what they're doing that day and uh, you know what they're having that day so we'll get cracking I'll get the little pink worm on and uh, so to speak and let's see what happens right um, just pop my drop shot on just to uh, give it a bash along this edge just trying it with a little pink worm thing See what, uh, see if we get any results. If not, then I'm probably going to put on a little white capito, which always seems to be good in coloured water. And the water is very coloured. Try this bit here. It's feeling my way along the bottom here. Little ledge there. Right. <clears throat> I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to change it low because we've got a lot of colour in the water. Just a tiny little white. Peter, I don't know whether you can pick that up, but that literally is all it is. <laughs> See if that uh, makes any difference. Yeah. 
that should do it. <clears throat> and you pick that up on camera. It's a tiny little white fish. Oh, and we're in straight away. <laughs> Amazing what a little change makes. I want it's a decent perch. Let's get it up. That was amazing. Amazing. Change of colour. Didn't even hit the bottom. Beautiful perch. There we go. Nice little perch. I'm just going to pop down here off camera to put it back in because it's too far to drop it there. Right, swung that one in. Uh, we get anything any bigger than that, I'm going to have to go down there to uh, to land it. But uh, what a difference that makes. I've just gone all the way along there with the pink, nothing. Put the white on, didn't even hit the bottom. Let's try again. Just putting a bit more action into it because I think they're taking it on the way down. Just goes to show though, we fished up and down here, nothing with that little pink worm, which is what you would expect a perch to take. You put on a, a pure white, very unfish-like little capito, and bang. Gonna work my way back this way now. Them there. Oh, that was a good bite. I think they're following it down and then hitting it on the bottom. Gonna work my way down this bank now. Wouldn't normally put that much motion into it, but as I say, they appear to be t following them down in the water and then attacking it. Not massive, but it's in. 
I can uh, lift this one. The brilliant neck, the perch. Again, I don't, don't want to drop it from this height, so I'm going to put it in behind the camera. Another go. Phew. It's like if you're fishing these sorts of spots, it's always a good idea to just pop your drop shot gear in with your little spinners. Because as I say, something like this where you've got a bit of a drop, it's perfect for drop shotting because anybody else that's not drop shotting is going to struggle to catch anything <clears throat> because you, you couldn't realistically use a, a lure properly. You maybe get it away with a jig, but then you're purely sitting on the bottom with it. Whereas with drop shots in you, you can set it to whatever depth you want in the water. I've got a boat, a canal barge coming through. You can see with the currents. Probably get another couple here to drop shot in if we can. And then we'll. Uh, Probably go back to the Mepses and move along the canal. Yeah. Quick, grab his line and look, I ain't catching ya! Afternoon, chaps! Right. It's a cracker, isn't it? Yeah, chuck some of that up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't mean the Lucas aid either. Right, we just had barge go through. Let's see whether that's uh, done anything. Sometimes with perch, you can actually turn them on because it messes all the water up. It just gives them a little bit more confidence. So you're not on the bottom there. So it's obviously gets deeper into the lock. Bit of current coming through still from the boat, but it's not a problem. You'll see as well that I keep periodically checking the hook because sometimes the hook, when you drop shot, can turn round and you want it facing up the line. All about the presentation. Right, looks as though that um, barge has spooked them up a little bit. We've had a few out. Um, been some nice perch to be fair um, but it was amazing how changing from that pink worm which uh, has been so good in the, in the past to the uh, the white capito and bang just uh, you know different different kettle of fish altogether I'm gonna have maybe I might have another jig just in front of these steps and then what we'll do is we'll move to the other side of the bridge and try there um, once we've done that, realistically, I'll probably take off the uh, drop shot and we'll uh, work the canal and the river. Oh, that felt that felt like a good perch. Bloody bloody cameraman distracting me. Shut up. <laughs> that was a good fish. Perch again. You can tell by the bites; they're not as violent as the. Uh, the pike. I tend to, uh, when I'm drop shotting, I tend to move it a bit quicker than most people. Um, maybe I'm impatient or what, I don't know, but doesn't seem to uh, affect the results. Yeah, we're in. It's not the one that I had on earlier. But it's, an, it's another little perch. 
there we go. It's only a small one, but it, nonetheless, beautiful fish. They're in cracking order, these. I'll pop it in, as I say, off camera, because uh, we have Oh, this feels good. This feels good. <laughs> if it's a perch, it's a good one. Oh, that might be a pike. It's a perch and it's a clonker. Right. This could be a PB, people, if I can get it. Right, we've got the, the mat and the scales. Let's uh, have a look what we've got. I think this is probably the biggest one I've had on drop shots. That's a nice fish. Let's uh, get the hook out. Nicely hooked in it. Upper mouth. Get rid of that. Right, we'll show it to the camera and then. Woo hoo hoo! That's, that's the one I felt. Nice fish. Beautiful fish. Probably the biggest I've caught drop shots in. Let's uh, just put it in the water for a second while we just get the scales. Right, that was uh, a cracker. That's a PB for me on drop shot. Um, I mean, my actual PB is five pound dead, but uh, on drop shot, that was uh, that was cracking sport and fun. I knew it was there because I'd had that hit before I caught that littler one, and then that came through. But again, you can't fish somewhere like that with that kind of depth unless you've got somewhere like this. One, to land it, two, to put it back safely. So you've seen me walking off camera um, to put the fish back. That's because we're coming down here and putting them back in properly rather than dropping them, you know, 12 foot into the water. So uh, I'm running out of capitos. <laughs> I think I've got one left. Let's uh, get that on and uh, see if we can uh, catch ourselves another one. Maybe the mother or father of that one. But that's the biggest uh, perch I've ever had on uh, drop shot. So uh, you might be seeing me drop shot a bit more. We. Uh, just had a beauty there. Um, as I say, PB for me, drop shots in. Uh, I'm down to me, last capita. What you tend to find when you drop shots in is that because you're hooking them on like bait, when you catch a fish, it's not that the fish is eating it, it's what's happening is in the fight, the bait's coming off like if it was a worm, it's gonna come off. So you need to take a few with you. I didn't think these would be good today uh, because of the brightness, and I only brought four, and uh, we're now on the last one. We're going to uh, spend a little bit more here for obvious reasons uh, and then we'll get wandering off down the canal and uh, the river and see what we can do. So uh, let's try again. Right, we're going to uh, move over to the other side of the bridge here. So we're actually moving into the mouth of the canal now and just see what happens there. Right, I'm going to uh, take off the drop shot and I'm going to put the maps on because we're in the canal now. <laughs> 